Hey, Detective Kreps, let me see that tattoo. What did you get a tattoo of? A knitting needle? You're a bloody liar. I don't believe you. Well, I'm not sure what he's up to, but let's try and figure it out as we decode Only Murders in the Building, Episode 8, Hello Darkness. I'm sorry it's been a busy week with school just starting and had a large event I just hosted so I didn't have time to get any screen grabs of this episode so the visuals will be a little generic but I'll be back to decent looking videos next week. But with that out of the way, let's talk about this week's episode. This was a whirlwind of an episode that started out with narration by Marv who has a nice voice but what got me was the comments by the super fans. I feel like the writers were messing with us issues I've felt about the season even more so what I've heard from others that there's no progress on who killed Bunny. It's barely been mentioned. The painting hasn't come up in at least four episodes and just like real life fans the Arconiacs are getting tired of it too. Some are thinking of jumping ship to other podcasts. I feel like this is meta commentary. of wondering if they can keep up the magic or will they falter and people will jump to something else. But I don't care. Like Marv I'm Omit B for life. Speaking of Marv, he keeps trying to put forward the idea of the 6th Avenue Slasher. I couldn't find anyone by that name that operated in New York, and the idea of a seer killer is not something I think the show would go with. Marv is shown to be a very caring and intelligent man, but a bit off his rocker. I think we can all agree that it appears that he means well. Later in the episode, the trio work their way up the stairs as Ursula gets her business of selling gut milk. I love her as a character, but pushing gut milk to people in a dire time of a blackout gives me drug dealer vibes. Nina has less to walk up 14 flights of stairs with her swing to help her non-sleeping baby. Through the conversation, it seems as if Nina still wants the building to be on the forefront of tech, but she may backpedal on some things. I don't think she will completely backpedal though. That may be a reason for her to be killed at the end of the season. Someone may not be a fan of it. And though the power was out, there was sparks flung between Howard and Jonathan. We finally found out what Howard does for a living. I don't know if the assistant director of collection development for the central Manhattan library makes enough to live in the building, but we'll let it slide because he was so cute and funny trying to get the courage to talk to his neighbor. The two share some moments and I think the writers attempted to lead us astray with the sneezing and being allergic to cats. Maybe it was just telling us the person we saw in the catacombs with Lucy has an allergy. The lights come back and Howard has a date. So there's no need to get rid of Sevlin Marie Morris. Yet. After finding Lucy in the catacombs, the trio is found by a mysterious person that turns out to be Marv. He says he was just trying to help. I think he's in the clear, but he did give a strange look to Detective Kreps at the end of the episode. Later in the episode, Lester laments that he thinks that he let the murderer in. I don't think that's true, and I think it's more likely that the murderer snuck in another way, like the way Marv mentions that he came in through some secret entrance. Marv also mentions that he wishes that his daughter would forgive him, but I don't know what he could need forgiving for. I'll say I don't think that Alice is his daughter. Marv states that his daughter recently got married. And as far as we know, Alice did not. Or at least I hope not. That two-time and girl married and then messing around with Mabel. But the biggest reveal is the fact that we find out that Detective Kreps is Glitter Guy. This leads to many questions that I can't answer. Namely, why would he tell the podcasters that Williams was on leave, making it clear that they were not talking to her? I think that he was the person who broke into Charles' apartment right before we saw him in the lobby talking to Lucy. Charles says the person Lucy saw, and then the camera pans to Detective Kreps. Also, when the intruder dropped the crowbar, we got a look at his shoes, and though they are similar, I don't think it's the same person that attacked Bunny. It would be hard to change outfits so many times, but I don't think it would be hard for someone to put on or take off a jumpsuit if it is over what you are already wearing. The person we saw was very tall, and not many people are that big. 
No one I can think of that size has a decent enough motive, so I'm going to assume that it was him also. And I know everyone noticed that strange exchange between him and Lucy. It was a look of familiarity, almost as if she was on his side. I don't like that, but it definitely looks as if she knew him. I don't think he is her new stepdad. That would place him at his own wedding on the same night. That is, if he was in the building the night Bunny was murdered. And I would hope that she would mention that to Charles. But stranger things happen, so I wouldn't put it past her. But if Lucy does know Detective Kreps, I don't think she knows that he was the person in the building that was after her. I also think it would be bold to ID the killer with two episodes to go. So I don't think that it was him who actually killed Bunny, but I have an idea of who it is. I recorded a couple days ago, but I'm going to have to rewrite a small bit of it with this week's information, and hopefully I have that out very soon. Don't forget we have a giveaway going on. I'll be giving away $50 in Only Murders in the Building official merch. All you need to do is be a subscriber and comment on a video. A winner will be chosen at random at the end of the season. That's all I was able to glean from this week's episode. Do you think that Kreps was the person we saw in the Arcatacombs this episode? If not, who was it? I just kind of wish it was Jared, but I know it's not him. Share your thoughts down below, and I'll catch you guys on the rooftop.